Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Let's bring in Dave Zangaro, NBC Philly. Dave, how you been? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. All right. Great start for the Eagles. Uh, no question about that. Uh, when you look at the defense and how they're playing now compared to week one against Detroit, what improvements have you seen where now they become a dominating group? Yeah, I, I think it, there's a lot of things that go into that. I, part of it is definitely the defensive coordinator, Jonathan Gannon, calling a better game, but uh, his players are executing too. They have a, a really good front that's getting after quarterbacks. Uh, they have linebackers that are flying to the ball, and then they have a secondary that uh, is pretty good in coverage. So um, I think overall you're just seeing they don't really have a lot of weaknesses on that side of the ball, and they're able to do so much because of that. They've been a really fun unit to watch so far. Dave, what has the depth meant to how they're playing rotations, especially up front, and how fresh are they in the, the fourth quarter? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty impressive, and the depth there even took a hit when they lost Derek Barnett for the year, but uh, as far as the edge players, they, they're still rolling through Josh Sweat, Hassan Reddick, Brandon Graham, uh, Patrick Johnson, a talented second-year guy. And then interior, I mean, they have five guys they play. Um, it's a really deep group there. You have Javon Hargrave and Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis, Marlon Tuipolotu, and Milton Williams. So they have five guys that they're rotating at the defensive tackle spot, which it's tough to find snaps for all those guys, but they've done it, and it's really helped them because, like you mentioned, they're, they're really fresh at the end of the game. To me, the guy that's helped more than anybody else is Brandon Graham. You know, he's had a couple of injuries along the way. He's a really talented guy, but he doesn't have to play 60 plays. And I think that is, I think, allowed him to thrive. What do you think? Yeah, it's interesting. He he played just 27 snaps in the game on Sunday, and he managed to have two and a half sacks, five QB hits. I mean, he was so, so good in that game. Uh, and you look back to, you know, the 2020 season, which was his last full one as a healthy player, and he was playing a ton, and they needed him to at that point. Uh, and you just questioned, you know, he's 34 coming off an Achilles injury. What kind of role is he going to have? And it's it's changed. And I give him credit for dealing with it the way he has. He's been very mature about it, as you'd expect from someone like him, because he's not a starter anymore. They have Josh Sweat in one of those roles, and they have a son Reddick in the other. So... Uh, he's more of a situational player, but, man, he looks good. He doesn't look like a 34-year-old four year old guy who missed last season with a Achilles. I mean, he's really helped them so far. I totally agree. And is, has Darius Slay now become the shutdown guy that every defensive coordinator is looking for? Yeah, and, I mean, to be honest, he was that last year. He was that at times his first year in 2020 here. I mean, he's just really good. And he's 31, too. It's not like he's a young guy, and he's at the age where maybe you'd think there might be some decline. And you start to wonder, you know, if a guy like that loses a step, how effective is he going to be? Those questions have been answered pretty early here about him. I mean, he's he is so good, and they give him the tough responsibilities that they you know he has to go out and cover the best receiver every week. He travels quite a bit. He doesn't go in the slot, but he travels to both sides of the field. And he's just been so good. And then the problem with him taking away a team's top receiver is, okay, they still have James Bradbury on the other side and Avante Maddox playing at a really high level as Nick corner. So uh, not a lot of weakness there. I'll, I'll say this about Slay. Slay smart. In a league in a league that at times I question, you know, like how well guys know how to play the game, and I can give you a long list. I mean, this past weekend was a list of, okay, what are you doing? What are you doing? I don't get it. Slay knows how to play. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he gets it. He picks up a step and a half on knowledge. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, he's a very savvy vet. And you see it uh, with a lot of the technique he plays. will sometimes bait quarterbacks into throws. Uh, and athletically, he's still there. I mean, he's still a super fast guy. He hasn't lost any of that speed. And I mean, what he did against Justin Jefferson a couple weeks yes. ago was a master yep. class. I mean, I don't know if there's – I mean, how many corners in the league can do that against Justin Jefferson? It's a, it's a really short list, and he put himself at the top of it. 
All right, let's get over to offense. Um, there are some people questioning in the offseason, especially against after the playoff game with Tampa Bay. Do you have all those first-round picks? Do you bother using one on a quarterback? I think Jalen Hurts is ending that talk, and now it's going to give Howie Roseman all the options in the world in that first round. What do you think of Hurts play at this point, and why is he playing at the level he's playing at? Yeah, it's been pretty amazing. I mean, that's the biggest story here in Philly is this guy who we we all kind of knew he was going to improve because you look back at his history, even dating back to really his freshman year at Alabama, he's gotten better every year. But to see this big of a jump from year one to year two as a starter, it's it's monumental. I mean, the, the way he's winning right now and the way he's performing – it's like, you know, the biggest question about this team coming into the year was, is he the franchise quarterback? I mean, the, the question now is, what's the ceiling for this guy? I mean, it it's looking like a legitimate, he can be an elite-type quarterback. He's in the MVP race. Uh, it, uh, look, it's early, and we understand that. It's three weeks into the season. But what we're seeing is really, really impressive. It's... it's um, and it's the, the growth as a passer, you know, because we know we can run the football, and, and that's not going anywhere, but the strides he's made as a pure pocket passer have really kind of blown me away. And if he can play like this the whole season, this team is a legitimate Super Bowl contender. What has Brown meant to Smith, and what has Brown meant to Hurts? Yeah, he's he's a dynamic receiver, and from watching him in Tennessee, like he knew he was good, but really from the first moment he stepped on the field in training camp, go like, okay, this guy, it's different. It's a different type of level. Um, I'll start with Hurts. He's really opened up the entire field for Jalen Hurts, and I mean that you know the width of the field, he can throw it to the left, to the middle, to the right, but also depth. He can throw it to any spot on the field. He can stretch vertically. He can hit those intermediate routes, um, and. The thing that I really give A.J. Brown so much credit for is we talked about plays savvy on the other side. A.J. Brown is a very savvy receiver. He does little things that really give him an edge, and that's important because he's already got an edge physically. He's a tank out there, but um, he he does so many impressive things, whether it's ball control, his late hands are are super impressive. Uh, So he's helping Jalen open the field, but he's also helping Devontae uh, in a few ways. I think one of those is giving him tips and improving him as an individual player, but the most obvious one is teams are worried about A.J. Brown, rightfully so. So, I mean, they're bracketing coverage, they're doubling him at times, and if you do that, which isn't a bad idea, I'd probably do it too if I'm a defensive coordinator, but the problem is then it, it leaves Devontae Smith in single coverage or it yeah. gives a mismatch with Dallas Goddard or at least Quez Watkins on an island and he can burn you. So, um, so many options for that offense, and, and Jalen Hurts has improved enough to find them. And then there's Miles Sanders. It's not as if the Eagles are a one-trick pony. It seems like this offense is bringing out the best in him. Is that what you're seeing, Dave? Yeah, and I give him credit because he's just been really steady early on this season. He hasn't had you know some, some monster production. It, it's been very good. Um, his average per carry is has been great so far. Uh, and, and it's almost like you kind of lose him in this offense at times. You forget he's there, and then you can't do that because they have such a good offensive line, and he can pick up chunks so effectively. That's you know he. We talked about improvement earlier with Jalen Hurts. I look back to when Miles got in the league, and uh, gosh, he's gotten so much better as a runner, um, so much more decisive, finding the hole and, and taking what the defense gives him instead of bouncing and trying to make big plays, which at times he did, but he had a lot of negative plays early in his career, and he's really eliminated those. He's giving, he's taking what the defense gives him, and, and he's really playing his role in this offense so well. Right. Schedule. You, you can only play who's in front of you. To be honest with you, they've played a, at best, mediocre schedule at this point. I mean, the only other undefeated team is Miami, and the two schedules are not on the same plane. I mean, look who Miami's beaten along the way. Is there any concern that because the NFC is not as the NFC is not as strong in terms of the number of quality teams compared to the AFC? Because these things go in 
these things go in trends. Uh, it used to be the NFC was like that. Now it's it's not so much. Any concern about anything until they actually face a real test? Because they haven't really faced one yet. Yeah, I, I will say that like the Detroit game looks a little like that win looks a little better now than it did when they won it. Minnesota, you know, that was a decent win. I, I think Minnesota is a team people think is going to be okay. And then, you know, Washington's probably not very good, but that's the reality of their division, you know, and, and they have a chance to really clean up in the NFC East and beat those teams. Uh, the NFC is wide open. So I, I get that they haven't really played any great teams, but they're not really going to have to, I mean, to, to win right, the division no, they, and right. to get they're a scheduled. high seed. So they just yeah. have to take care of business and, uh, they, right. they play they play a few good teams. I mean, I don't know what Arizona is going to be next week. That's kind of a weird team to figure out. They play really one great quarterback this year. That's Aaron Rodgers, I think, in Week 12. So, right. yeah, I, I guess you have to worry about it when you get to playoff time, but not much they can do about it. They've really taken care of business so far, and that's what they have to do. They have to just beat down these teams right. that aren't very good and kind of assert their dominance that way. I'll say this. I'm going to be very interested to see when they face the Cowboys defense, only because the Cowboys defense, I mean, they got some guys that can run. Uh, they do. That, I mean, and that's going to be the now, The Cowboys, I don't think, have the offense. I don't think the Cowboys' offense is that great. Their defense is probably one of the top five in the NFC. Like the Eagles, by the way. They have a top five NFC defense. That, that'll be an interesting one to watch, two of them to watch. Yeah, it will be. They have, you know, the the thing we saw last night with Dallas is that front and how effective they are rushing the passer. That's the matchup in that game, right? Because the Eagles have such a good offensive line. Uh, Dallas has those pass rushers. Demarcus Lawrence looks like he turned the clock back a little bit. And Micah Parsons is just, you know, you have to account for him. On, he's he's the new like middle linebacker. You have to know where he is on every play. Right. Um, but as long as... Look, I think those are two strengths going against each other. And overall, I, I mean, I really do think the Eagles have a better roster than the Cowboys. I do, too. No, I agree with you. I, I, I do, too. I'm just saying I, I find the matchup of a dynamic offense and a defense that is pretty dynamic at getting to the quarterback, um, an interesting matchup that would be fun to watch. I think that's how I'd phrase it. I think it'd be yeah, fun to watch. Yeah, I'm curious to see how they, how they match up with Hurts in that game. Uh, because it, honestly, his dual threat ability puts stress on defenses, and it's it's not easy to figure out how to take him away. Because yeah, you can force him to try to throw the ball on you, but if he gets pressured, you know, if, if Dallas gets after him in that game, he does have the ability to run away from him, and then do they start to spy him? So there's all this this, this chess game with a yeah. player like Jalen Hurts on the other side. That'll be a fascinating yeah. matchup. Yeah, it's spying him. I don't even know if spying him is good enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can spy him, and not catch him. He's, I mean, the, the spy is still running after him. I mean, my goodness. Uh, Dave, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate the insight and you. Thanks. Take care.